I honestly, I can't think of anybody who should narrate my memoir beside me because it's my life. <laughs> my favorite sound is the sound of children playing in water, like splashing around and laughing and giggling and jumping in and out. That's my favorite sound. My least favorite sound is the sound of um, a creature in pain, like an animal or a child or an adult, just like anybody in like deep, suffering pain. You know, I really can only write in silence or in like white noise, brown noise, gray noise, any kind of noise that is not specifically distracting. I love to listen and re-listen and re-listen to anything written and read by Amanda Gorman. I think the thing I love most in storytelling is experiencing storytelling that feels connected to like our most human emotions. like. Those stories that are bittersweet, that kind of crack our hearts open and make us feel vulnerable and aware of our humanity and our connection, our compassion. Like that's what I love most about storytelling, that feeling like we are all human beings experiencing different versions of the same journey. I think I would say plot. I mean, setting, super important. Character, super important. But plot, like understanding the beginning, middle, and end, I think is the most important thing, maybe, kind of. Yeah. I honestly, I can't think of anybody who should narrate my memoir beside me because it's my life. <laughs> it's my life. I don't know. Maybe if my memoir was ever recorded by somebody else, I would want lots of different kinds of people to read the parts that resonate most with them. Sadly, I do not like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> I wish that I did. I wish that my sense of like radical self-acceptance and love extended to the sound of my voice, but I don't love the sound of my voice. I write or create for my inner child or my shadow self so that those parts of me can kind of be made manifest and then be integrated into myself and live out in the world. That might sound crazy, <laughs> but that's my truth. I don't think that there's one person whose praise I strive for, but I do think there are a lot of people whose opinions are important to me, you know, people who I love and respect and admire. I guess for me, success is kind of like doing my best. Did I try my hardest? Did I leave it all out on the field? Was I true to myself? If I can answer yes to those questions, then I think it's a success. Sometimes I feel like my greatest achievement is like being able to be in the day, be kind of in touch with peace and service and love and joy and gratitude. I think most days that have felt like perfect days to me have involved some sort of um, physical activity, like some opportunity to be fully embodied even if it's just snuggles with my kids or a hike or a dance party or um, often some sort of creativity, whether it's like movie or music or performance or a museum and nature. As long as I'm, you know, not doing anything that contributes negativity into the world, then if it brings me pleasure, I don't need to feel guilty about it. You know, I don't know what something is that people would be surprised to know about me. But I'm really looking forward to people listening to the memoir because I feel like, I feel like maybe a lot of things will surprise people, but I'm not sure exactly which parts. So I'm excited to get that feedback and, um, and to see what surprises people. All right, there you have it. That is my Audible questionnaire extraordinaire. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope that you enjoy listening to Thicker Than Water. From my heart, to yours.